Hello and welcome back to the Prada Museum in Madrid, Spain for more of our Wednesday series of short conversations in English. This is made possible with the help of the supporters of the American Friends of the Prada Museum. Today we're going to be looking at a copy. And you might think with so many great originals here in the Prada Museum, why would we take time to look at a copy? Well, copies used to have uh, very different functions and very different values in uh, just as recently as the end of the 19th century. And we'll talk about some of those, but what I really want to focus on today is uh, that a copy really is an opportunity to see the collection of the Prado through the eyes of the artist. And so today we're going to be looking at the Prado's collection through the eyes of Mariano Fortuny, or Mariano Fortun in Catalan. In this painting of St. Andrew, painted around 1867. And this is a copy of another painting that we have here right by its side of Jose de Ribera's St. Andrew, painted around 1631. Fortuny was born in 1838 in the city of Reus in Catalonia, in the northeastern region of Spain. And he married into a very important family, the Madrazo family, the Madrazos. The Madrazos really were a dynasty of painters, of writers, architects, even directors of this museum. So it's family that really was at the center of art and culture throughout, throughout the entire 19th century. Fortuny was trained in Barcelona and then in Rome, and he was even sent to Morocco. He went to Rome again, so he had abundant international experience. Fortuny was probably in his lifetime the most cosmopolitan, most promising, most exciting, most successful, and in high international demand uh, of artists in Spain, and really one of the greatest between Goya and Sorolla. And one of the exciting things about the copy that he made of St. Anne, I think, is that he painted it here. He painted it here in the gallery of the Prado Museum. And of course, it's a copy of this painting here by Ribera. This is the St. Andrew by Ribera that was painted in 1631. Jose de Ribera is from Valencia, although he spent uh, the majority of well, all of his uh, life in his working life in Naples. At the time, the Kingdom of Naples was under Spanish rule, meaning that it was governed by viceroys, who were people that were appointed by the Spanish king. And several of those viceroys really took a liking to Ribera, and they sent a lot of his works to Spain. King Philip IV of Spain ended up with over 100 paintings by Ribera. And as a Baroque painter, he was interested in the depiction of expression. Oh. Ribera is recognizable for his naturalism, these unidealized models, and the use of tenebrism, which is the, um, the sharp difference between light and dark against these dark backgrounds. And of course, when we look at this, we can think of the influence of Caravaggio. St. Andrew was a disciple of Jesus. He was one of the 12 apostles, and he has this X-shaped cross, which is now given the name St. Andrew's cross. And at the bottom, you can also see that there's a fish here. These are his attributes, this cross and this fish, because St. Andrew was a fisherman. And so this helps us identify the saint. And Ribera was especially uh, well known for his ability to reproduce skin, the treatment of skin. You can notice, for example, the, the really thick impasto that is used on his forehead which really even gave a three-dimensional effect and in a way that expresses emotion. So now let's go back to our copy for a minute and think that, again, copies have uh, different uses. First, we have to remember that copies simply were held in higher esteem than what we think of today, even as, as late as the end of the 19th century. But we also know that artists use copies to train themselves. However, when Fortuny copied this painting, he was around 30 years old. He wasn't an artist that was in training. He wasn't copying this necessarily to train himself. 
And when we look closely, I think we can uh, um, see some of the things that called Fortuny's attention about Rivera's St. Andrew. Notice the way that this painting is cropped, for instance. We no longer have the element of the cross or the fish. He's removed the religious references, so we can start to see what called his attention about the painting. Fortuny was fascinated with the effects of light, and especially on the old man's chest, on the bare chest. And he was interested in this quality of the painting independently of its religious content. Like Rivera, Fortuny was interested in the materiality of paint and using light and texture to show expression. Javier Portus has a wonderful conference that explores, you can find it on the Prado's website, it is in Spanish, and it explores the relationship of Fortuny with the old masters in the Prado's collection and considers, well, who are the, the, the artists that he was looking at and what is it that unites them? Why was Fortuny called by those artists? And those artists are people like mm, Tintoretto, like Velázquez, like El Greco, like Rivera. And uh, what is it that brings this group together? Well, it's really a colorist painting tradition, which is based on Venetian painting, and the cornerstone of which is Titian. And this is a tradition of painting that is so well represented here in the Prado Museum. We have to think that um, this tradition of painting that starts in Venice, this colorist tradition, is uh, made up of painters that prefer to layer and blend colors to achieve lifelike natural images with soft edges as opposed to those artists who might have concentrated on contour or line or form. And so this is the tradition that Fortuny is trying to associate himself with, not necessarily train himself in, but perpetuate and associate himself with. A lot of artists even would keep copies of old masters in their workshops. And to go into an artist's workshop when you were going to work with them and see that you could find these old master copies that were recognizable, well, you would see that the artist was identifying himself with that particular tradition. And of course it has another use. And that is that uh, Fortuny took this painting as a jumping off point for a new creative direction. And here we can see uh, another painting by Fortuny clearly inspired by the copy and by the painting by Ribera of an old man in the sun. Fortuny was fascinated with this subject and, and actually this particular model. And he painted and sketched and engraved it multiple times, always returning to this elderly man, normally bare chested. And again, this is to study the effect of light and texture on their aging skin. We can see his assimilation of Ribera's style, but now completely made his own into something original with light and its expressive effects, texture and color, with Fortuny's quick brush stroke that is uh, excited and vibrating. It's full of movement, full of dynamism. And with that, we'll conclude our short conversation in English today. I hope that you've enjoyed uh, seeing Mariana Fortuny's painting and also uh, understanding the value and the function of copies and how they're a little bit different than we might think today. So thank you for joining, and we'll see you again next Wednesday.